This sweet little hedgehog was such a delight to draw in colour pencils and gave me the opportunity to put my slice cutter and Tombow mono eraser to good use. I started off by drawing the outline of the eye using a polychromos Van Dyke Brown and then I built up the darker shades using some black, chocolate, nightshade and some white for the highlight. I then drew in the nose using these same colours along with some grey. To lift out the lighter areas and highlights I used a Tombow Mono Eraser and a Slice Cutter. The slice cutter is fantastic for these long hairs. And so we're going to use the slice cutter method on this bottom section. Um, and then I'm going to talk about doing a different method um, when we get to the spikes. The thing I just want to point out before we get started on this bit, though, is here, this kind of bit where it's very much overlapping, it looks quite a lot of hair, light hairs all over the top of each other, is it's not just going to be about using the slice cutter, it is going to be about applying those layers as well to make them look hair-like. Whereas as you move more down here and you've got just light hair, um, very much kind of with dark in between, that's slightly different. So we're going to look at both ways. Um, and then hopefully you can use them in your own projects um, then as well. The key with the face was to get down the lightest base colours first using some buff titanium and white and some raw umber 10%. I then started to build up the textured effect stroking on the spines in several layers of colours from light to dark using colours such as raw umber 50%, sepia 50%, sepia, chocolate, black, nightshade and I also used some crimson aubergine and brown ochre to warm it up. Once I had got enough layers down I used a slice cutter to lift out the lighter spines leaving the darker shades in between them. The great thing about this is that you can add some pencil over the top and repeat the process. until you reach the level of depth that you're looking for. Moving on to the longer coarse hairs on the underside of the hedgehog, I repeated the same process as I had on the face. Again, the key is to get some good light base layers of colour down first before building up the darker colours and it's also important to use the long strokes to build up the texture of that long hair. The fun part was using the slice cutter with the long flowing strokes to lift out the light hairs, which could then be built upon to make it look like lots of overlapping coarse hair. I then darkened the very bottom to help give it some more shaping. Moving on to the spines, I drew them on using some buff titanium and I built up the darker colours in between so that the buff titanium actually acted as a wax resist and I used some raw amber 50%, chocolate, black, nightshade and crimson aubergine. And then I used my Tombow Mono Eraser to clean up the spines and make sure that they're a little bit tidied up. They were easier to clean because of the base layers that I had put down in the first place. On the very back of the hedgehog, I wanted it to be less in focus, so I used a slice cutter to lift out some marks very carefully to create the illusion of those sort of smaller spines making them look further away. Before going back over all of the spines to add in some more colours such as brown ochre, burnt sienna and olive brown 50% and then I just used some of the darker colours to finish tidying them up. Once I had the body completed I moved on to those sweet little legs. Now there isn't so much detail needed here it's more about getting the tonal values right as they are mostly in shadow apart from a few lighter patches. 
I washed on some layers of raw umber 10%, sepia 10%, sepia, nightshade, crimson aubergine and chocolate. And I also used some olive brown and brown ochre in the warmer areas on the back leg. I also made sure to add the very dark area underneath the hedgehog using some chocolate, nightshade, crimson aubergine and black to create contrast to make the hedgehog stand out and to make it look more 3D. I finished this bit off by using a slice cutter to lift out a few overlapping hairs from the body. With the hedgehog complete, I moved on to those autumn leaves with their gorgeous colours and there were some bits of grass tucked in between them. For the grass, I used layers of olive yellow, grass green 70%, dark sap green and some chromium oxide green. And then for the greeny leaves, I used some of those colours again but mixed them with some raw sienna, bandite brown, sepia, perylene brown and terracotta where they were beginning to change colours. For the orangey leaves I used layers of yellow ochre, terracotta, natural russet, burnt ochre and then some of the anthraquinone carmine for the tip where it's a bit pinky and some van dyke brown in the darkest areas. I built up from light to dark drawing around the veins to leave them the lighter shades of colour. For those very darkest areas, I washed on some sepia, perylene brown and dark sap green. And then I used some olive brown 50% on that lighter brown yellow leaf, mixed with some olive yellow, golden bismuth yellow. And then I used some sepia 10% to tone it down a little and give it a little shaping. I then carried on working up the leaves using variations of the same sort of colours that I'd been previously using. For the darker red ones, I used some perylene brown, chocolate, nightshade and some burnt ochre. I carried on including bits of grass and darker areas to make it look like the leaves had fallen from the trees onto the grassy area. To get a realistic effect, I made sure to draw in some small marks on the leaves using a Van Dyke brown, which make it look like it was changing colour or that it had developed some kind of disease to the leaf. It makes them look a little bit more interesting. To achieve the more shiny side of some of the leaves, I used a firmer pressure in the final layers to burnish them, which gives them that more of a shiny effect. Another important aspect of drawing leaves is to make sure you include different shapes, sizes and angles, as well as colours and tonal values. It's also a good time to check the edges between the hedgehog and the leaves, as it's important to make sure the line on the front of the leaves is in front of the hedgehog itself. I then moved back to the right side of the picture to complete those leaves to balance them out with the rest of the drawing. For the yellowy leaf, I used some Naples yellow, golden bismuth yellow, yellow ochre, olive yellow, and then a bit of Van Dyke brown in those darker areas. I then made sure I repeated my layers to build up the intensity of colour that I was looking for. I also used some things like raw sienna, burnt ochre, and anthraquinone carmine in more of the orangey parts of the leaves. Not forgetting to add in those marks on the leaves using the Van Dyke Brown. The final but very important aspect of completing a drawing is to go back over it and look for any bits that need tweaking. For this, I check all edges and look at tonal values. In the case of the leaves, I darkened some parts that were underneath in shadow to make sure the lighter bricks were brought forward a bit by creating more contrast between the areas. I then repeated this with the hedgehog using dark colours to tidy around any spines and to darken any areas to create more contrast. I then used my Tombow Mono Eraser to lift out any final highlights. And there we have it, one hedgehog in amongst the leaves. If you would like to have a go at drawing this one yourself, then the real time videos and all the materials you need are available to purchase as an in-depth tutorial or you can access it via my membership, Draw Around the World in Colour Pencils. 
To find out more, just visit my online art school, Izzy's School of Art. I hope you've enjoyed this little time lapse. If so, please be sure to give it a like and subscribe to my channel to help me grow it and provide you with more videos in the future. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.